Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through some amazing watercolour hacks that are quick, simple and so fun to do when you are using watercolours. I am using very affordable products for this demonstration and I have listed all of the materials that I am using down below as well. But anyway, let's jump right in with hack number one. So one of the biggest issues with watercolour pieces is when you try and remove the tape that is holding down your paper and it rips. So this first hack is a great way to prevent your paper from ripping when you remove the tape. So what I do is sweep that tape over a dry clean towel to pick up some of the fibres from the towel and that makes the tape less adhesive. So you can use any kind of fabric for this as well. So you can use clothing or other material and it really just helps to make sure that the tape lifts off the paper smoothly and gently. The next hack is also another great way to remove tape without damaging your paper. And the only thing I'm using for this hack is a hairdryer. So put your hairdryer on a cool low setting and at a distance go over the tape to loosen the adhesive. As you start to pull the tape away from you, you can blow the warm air underneath the tape and it will just lift straight off the paper with no issue. Hack number three is a great hack to make sure that your watercolours go a long way and your water stays clean. So most artists just use one pot of water, but I have found using two pots of water keeps your paintbrushes cleaner for longer. When I am painting and I want to clean my brush, I will first swell that paintbrush in the first pot of water and then give the brush an extra clean and I will put it in the second pot of water to do this. So it's a great way to keep your water clear and to stop colours from becoming muddied as well. So as you can see, the paintbrush is covered in green paint. So to give that brush a good clean, I will first swish it around in the first pot of water and then I will give it an extra clean in the second pot of water and the brush looks as good as new. So we're moving on to hack number four now and this is such a simple yet effective way of making sure that you really get the most out of your watercolours. A lot of artists clean their palettes after every use but I don't. Instead what I do is I wake them up on the palette with water and I just reuse them. I just find that reusing colours over and over again saves me money in the long run as well. Hack number five is one of my favourite little tricks when I'm painting and for this you will need a spray bottle. So I got this from a travel kit and all I've done is fill it up with just plain tap water. So what I do is I use this for wetting down all the colours in my paint palette so that I don't have to spend ages waking up colours with just a paintbrush and water. The spray bottle just wets down those colours so that I can just paint straight onto the paper. It is such a cool little trick that saves me a lot of time with mixing colours when I'm painting and it keeps the watercolours wet for a really long time as well. And as you can see, I also wet down the colours already on the palette. For the next hack, I'm going to show you how you can create fantastic effects and also control your water flow so much better. So you can get lots of different sizes and water pens are amazing at creating watercolour gradients and also they help you with managing how much water you put on your paper so you don't apply too much or too little water. What I like to do is work straight from my palette by picking up colours from the palette and then using the water from the pen to distribute that water flow over the paper. And you can control the water flow just by squeezing the side of the pen to make the water glide over the paper. It is great for creating lots of unique effects and textures and really just helps transform your art. Now when it comes to outlines, a very important thing to do is make sure that your outline sketches don't show through your painting. And what a lot of artists do is they use graphite pencils. However, I noticed that graphite pencils show through a lot of my paintings. So instead, I often opt for a water soluble pencil to outline my sketch. 
With graphite, the lead is quite hard and it can't be blended out with water. So unless your outlines are very light, quite often those pencil lines will just show through your piece and that can look quite unattractive and unappealing. So you really don't want any harsh outlines showing through and graphite pencils also look really muddy when you go over them in watercolors. So if you use a water soluble pencil instead, those lines will just magically disappear when you apply water. So in a second you will see exactly how much better water soluble pencils are for painting in watercolours. Honestly there is no comparison between the two whatsoever so if you are finding that you're having issues with your outlines showing through your paintings try this technique and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how amazing this works. Now this next tool is definitely a hidden gem. A pipette is a fantastic way to soak up lots of excess water from your paper if you've accidentally applied too much. I am forever applying too much water to my paper so having a tool to hand like this is a lifesaver. If you do apply too much water to your paper and it's creating puddles, gently squeeze onto the side of the pipette and it will suck in a lot of water and just lift it off the paper. It will really help you dry up the paper and you definitely don't want your paper too wet because that can cause damage to the paper and even rip the paper. So this is a great way to stop that from happening. Now for me, one of the most frustrating things to happen when I'm using watercolours is to be happily painting away and then, oops, I get watercolour somewhere I don't want it. Sponges are amazing. All I do is just lightly dampen a clean sponge and then I very gently wipe away the mistake that I made. This little trick works every time and it even works if I'm using a really dark watercolour like black. So I always have my sponge to hand when I'm painting, so if I do have a happy accident I can just clean it up straight away with no hassle and no fuss. Masking fluid is a really popular product for artists to have in their watercolour sets because it acts as a barrier and stops watercolour from getting into those places you want to keep white. However, most artists will agree that using masking tape is a pain to lift up once it has dried. I do have a helpful tip though that I'm going to share with you today. So firstly, just apply your masking fluid as normal with a cheap paintbrush and make sure you cover all the areas you don't want to cover with watercolour. Create your watercolour washes as normal and then wait for the layers to dry before picking the masking fluid off. Instead of using your fingers to pick away at the masking fluid, get a tea towel, wrap it around your finger and gently start to rub the masking fluid away. So it is a much more effective and quicker way to remove masking fluid and I actually find it so much better than using my fingers. Now the one thing I love about watercolours is the fact that you can get so many gorgeous and stunning paintings and you can create really cool effects with watercolours too. So one of my favourite effects to create with watercolours is a starry effect that looks super realistic and beautiful. So all you need is some white gouache paint and a flat paintbrush or an old toothbrush and once you've created a lovely background sky you can just use the brush to flick paint onto the paper. What I do is I use a generous amount of gouache paint with a slight amount of water and I hold the brush between my thumb and finger and then just gently flick the brush with my finger. So what that does is create tiny little specks of white paint onto the paper that just looks like a night sky with stars. It is such an effective technique and a technique that I do use all the time for my watercolour pieces. And white gouache paint is archival with watercolours as well. And you can also use white gouache paint for creating highlights in your paintings too. And I do have to say, this is probably my favourite little trick to use in my watercolour paintings. So we just talked about creating highlights with gouache paint and this handy hack is another way that you can create awesome highlights that will show through your paintings. So for this I'm just using a white coloured pencil and all I'm doing is writing a couple of words onto the paper and in a minute all will be revealed when I apply my watercolours onto the paper. So this again is a great way to create really cool effects and if you don't have masking fluid or gouache paint this technique will work really well for creating highlights. 
So see when I apply my watercolours where I indented the paper with the white pencil, the words that I wrote just show through the watercolours. So it's a really neat way to preserve those light areas and even add patterns and things to your background. And just quickly, if you are new around here, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel as your support really helps me and I love making these videos as well. The last but not least, our final hack is another great and effective way to add a bit more depth to your piece and to lighten areas up within a painting. So when you are painting backgrounds, if you want to lighten up an area or if you applied a bit too much watercolour down, you can just use a clean wet paintbrush to go back over some of the areas you painted and what this will do is just lighten up some of those areas. So this is really good because all you're going to be using is just a paintbrush and water, nothing else and it's just a simple technique that helps to add some lighter areas in your paintings. So if you are painting landscapes this technique is a great one to use. But that actually just finishes off all the watercolour hacks for this video and I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and I hope there were a few hacks in here that you hadn't heard of. If you are new around here then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified of all my uploads. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!